Welcome back to my fucking jobs. We talk about all these crazy jobs I've had. So, I wanted to show this picture. This is uh, this is me, <laughs> and Dennis Quaid. This is when uh, I was working at the pizza place, and uh, one day Dennis Quaid came by, and he was drunk, and uh, he was. He was like, yeah, give me, like, three pizzas for, uh, yeah, me and my friends or whatever. And he was actually in the movie we were playing. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know what movie that was. But I actually thought he was Harrison Ford for some reason. I, I almost I almost even asked him, which is not even a Harrison Ford movie, I almost asked him, oh, I loved you in Jurassic Park. But uh, he was not the guy in Jurassic Park. In fact, people always, when I tell them about this, I'm always like, what? I met Dennis Quaid. And they're like, oh, I know who that is. And I try to think of a movie to tell them, and people think try to think of a movie themselves, and nobody knows a movie that he's in, so... I don't know, I think he's just one of those people. But anyways, uh, while he was in taking this picture, my, my co-worker right here, he was telling me that... Yeah, when Dennis Quaid was holding me, he was, like, squeezing me like crazy. <laughs> like, he's his arm around here, and he's just, like, squeezing his chest right there for some reason. I don't know why. But that was, uh... That was a pizza place. So we're moving on now. Next is kind of a weird era of, uh, of, uh, what you call it, jobs and stuff. Uh, I did, uh, all sorts of different things. I'm not sure, I'm not sure when I did this graphic design stuff. I think it was around this time, so I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, it was pretty cool. There was this kind of, there's basically this kid who's like, I have a software company. I'm going to rent out a space and da da da. He's like, come, come, let's do business. We're pretending like we're actually productive and doing real things. Um, he had like a whole crew. I remember first coming there and be like, whoa, neato. There's like, it's a real software company and I'm here. I, I like this. Oh, man. And uh, they were working, and I was just hanging around because my friend was doing quote unquote work. And uh, uh, if, if they actually got paid real quote unquote monies, I think they were trying really hard and hopes to be a quote unquote start up. Um, but who knows if they actually got any money or anything like that. But, anyways, when I was hanging around, I was making some some graphics using those computers and stuff <clears throat> and uh... they're like oh you should help brand this on this thing so i started making graphics for something oh now that i'm re recalling this is not this is what i'm going to talk about was happened way later so I'll, I'll do that but this was kind of a pseudo job i was supposed to be paid for i guess you can call it a job because i was supposed to be paid but i was not and uh... And then I burned down the place. No, I wish I did. Well, they, they never burned down. They actually closed down because they didn't really make any real money, supposedly. But I think he got money, like the the main dot guy did, and he ran off with it. Why do I find myself around all these shady people? I don't know. But uh, what I did was make cupcakes and cracking egg animations for uh, a kid's game. I also made the music. Oh, that was what originally was was meant to do was just the music, and then they wanted me to do graphics afterwards. And uh, as for uh, the client was actually a pretty big company. It was for this. I don't know if they're called Bella or just their branch, whatever was called Bella. But it was for these like like cake pop machines. They like <laughs> I don't know why a dollar sign. You. You make like cake pops and these little like kid, they look like kid toys, but you actually bake stuff in them. And so we had to make an application, like an iPod, I, I, iPhone application, an iPad, uh, where you baked stuff using these devices. Um, so I had to make a bunch of different animations, I made a shitload, never got paid for, blah, blah, blah. Also, I thought it was funny with the music, uh, I sent the music. Uh, and the first, the owner of the company or whatever, they listened to it, and I was always surprised with the graphics we were making. They were not 
very picky about it. I would be surprised which shit got passed, because it was not... Some of the shit wasn't the greatest. But they were like, okay, whatever. If this was a real client. I'm really suspicious about this whole... This whole dealio. But they, uh... Um, they said my first song sounded like a stoned turtle looking for food. And I still take that as the best compliment to any of my music. Stoned turtle looking for food. Oh, I gotta draw a little. There you go. He's stoned. Where's the, where's the food? Where's the food? Is it a cupcake? You're looking for a cupcake? A cake pop? You got cake pops, you can make it in the machine. Um, and then I sent more music, they said they wanted more girly, and they just never liked the music, which was weird, because the music was actually pretty sweet, in my opinion, but the graphics weren't, so that was kind of silly that they were picky about that. Moving on. Um, so another odd job that I was kind of doing was doing tarot routines. So this was an interesting endeavor. I would, uh, go out to the bars downtown Austin. Uh, east side bars because those are the hipster ones the cool ones and uh, uh, I'd have to ask the owner can I can I read cards in your establishment I always enjoyed the process of going into the bar and trying to figure out who the owner was which I was amazing at I could always tell right away who the owner was by the way they carried themselves um, and all these east side bars were all female owners which I thought was kind of an interesting aspect um, but they usually were cool with it. Sometimes they asked for a reading on the spot, which was kind of cool. And so I'd be like, yeah, look at the, it's a reading, it's, uh, your future, whatever. I don't really read the future. It's, uh, it's your present. Now, everybody has their own interpretations of how that works. I'm not going to get into even, even close to getting into that. Um, but I did, uh, I did this on uh, quite a few nights, sometimes the weekends, sometimes the weekdays. I think I liked the weekday because it weren't as busy. But I'll make a little candle and uh, sit at a table and uh, what you call, I have my cards. I'd be in a bow tie. I'd look dapper instead of uh, instead of like mystical. I was all about that. I wanted to be more presentable? I don't know. I don't know what the idea was. I was trying to brand myself, I guess you could say. And it'd be by donations only, so people would just pay what they felt like it was worth at the time. And it would serve me pretty well. Like, I would make... Well, sometimes I wouldn't make anything. It'd either be, like, kind of busy or not busy at all. So when it was kind of not busy, I would kind of leave and get all be all stressed out and stuff. Clomping down, taking the bus really late at night. Um... But I make anywhere, like, if I actually made money, I'd usually make, like, 20 bucks. And the most I made at just a bar was, like, 90 bucks. And that's like usually only, like, three hours max. And, but the best were parties. And, uh, I would charge, like, 50 bucks an hour. And they tipped me on top of that. So that turned out, that was a great ordeal. But I haven't really done it much since, or... So I was doing that for maybe a while. Not very often. I mean, it'd come out to be like sometimes $8 to $15 an hour for a few hours a week. So it's not like a full-time job or anything like that. Um, also during that time, I was... Yeah, I think all three of those things were going on around the same time. And this third thing I'm talking about is... Uh, I worked for this t-shirt company. Um, it really was just one lady doing it. And... Uh, she basically did it out of her house. And uh, she was pretty well off, or at least her little family was. I don't think she made a lot of money with the shirts. She made a decent amount. But her husband worked like with video games and stuff, and I thought that was super cool. I was like, yeah, I was like, I like video games, I like making video games. Can you, what if you made a game like this? Da -da 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 -da. And their friend worked on a really cool game that I played all the time when I was a kid, and he was the lead programmer, and I was like, Wow, I'd ask him questions and stuff like that. Um, so what I would have to do with that job is tag these shirts. And I always thought it was kind of weird just like to be paid for such a process. And I got paid a decent amount. Oh, let me backtrack a little bit. That's not what I started doing with that company. I started... Company. <laughs> um, quotes. I'm putting quotes on company because, uh, I mean, it's one person. 
um, I started out helping her drive literally like because she said she felt anxious from this past experience she had with her mother-in-law where she was driving on a bridge and <laughs> I love all these specifics in the back seat uh, her mother-in-law had a slice of pizza and her son who was really young was starving and like screaming for the pizza and her mother-in-law wouldn't give her the, him the pizza <laughs> so she like stopped on the bridge or something like that it was just it was basically that moment it was really traumatic for her <laughs> so I can't even not laugh during that you know <laughs> so basically because of that she she didn't like to drive as much she could drive she just wouldn't want to do it very often so I would drive for her quote unquote business days and she paid me a decent amount an hour to do that which is kind of crazy to, I always felt like, wow, like I've worked so hard in some jobs and got paid dirt. And then this job was like the easiest job. She's like taking me out for coffee and stuff. And and sometimes we just eat. Sometimes we do hardly anything. She doesn't do anything on her quote unquote business days. It's almost like she, she's just paying me for like company because she's lonely or something like that. Um, so eventually turned into doing the shirts from the from the from doing driving and uh, I had to tag the shirts with a little like price basically a price tag but it was just like the brand basically so it's been hours doing that and I would babysit she had like the little little girls like three years old and then like a ten-year-old boy who was obnoxious and so I would like tag the shirts and babysit and I really had an awesome time with the little girl because she was really imaginative and like she was crazy she was just nuts so we would just like be imaginative play games be silly it was awesome uh, so do the shirts okay so that's those jobs um, oh right okay so continuing on basically to sum up, uh, her husband was just really jealous of her, or all the time, of anything that happened. And uh, he got jealous of me. He, like, threatened me. He's like, stop spending time with my wife while I'm at work or whatever. I was like, dude, I'm just, like, working here. What the hell? And uh, her solution to this was to... Instead of me working, I just wasn't allowed at their house anymore. And so instead of working at her house, I would work at her other quote-unquote business. And now we're going to backtrack again. There's a lot of backstory to describe with this. So there was this shop. Well, the, the video is kind of going long, so I'm going to stop an episode.